Hi everybody! This is the video for week 3 of XI-232. This week we were continuing using this new actuarial notation that we introduced at the end of last week, and we actually re-expressed many of the earlier results that we've already derived in terms of this new actuarial not notation. So the P's are the probability of surviving a certain time period, starting from an age X. Q is the probability of dying in a certain time period, starting from age X. And a deferred Q is the probability of dying in the same time period of length T, starting from an age X, except we're deferring that time period U years into the future. So there were a number of results that we can uh, now express using these new symbols. And two of the most important ones are that the probability density function of Tx, that's little f sub x of T, can be expressed as Tpx times mu x plus T. So that's going to be really helpful for the later stuff. And the other one is a nice relationship that exists between Tqx and Tpx mu x plus T. In fact, what we get is Tqx is just the integral from 0 up to T of that probability density function. So if we use a dummy variable, we'll have the integral from 0 to T of rpx mu x plus r dr. And all of that is just equal to Tqx. So there are a number of other relationships as well, but those are just the two I wanted to highlight. Once we have those, especially that first one I mentioned, the uh, probability density function, we can then calculate moments of the future lifetime random variable Tx. So the first moment, obviously, the one that's most important to us would be the mean, and that would be the mean future lifetime, or the average future lifetime, or the expected future lifetime, of a life that's currently age x. And we call that E circle x, and that's just known as the complete expectation of life for a life age x. And it turns out that if we start by using first principles of expectation and integrate by parts, we end up with a nice simple formula for E circle x. It's just the integral from 0 all the way up to infinity of the survival function tpx, dt. So that's a pretty nice result. We can also get a result for the variance of tx. Uh, and I didn't write it out, and I'm not going to, but we can get that as well by first calculating the second moment and then subtracting the first moment squared. From there, we moved on to the curtate future lifetime random variable, which is kx. And we had to shift gears a little bit here because kx is a discrete random variable. It measures the number of complete years of future lifetime. So basically, we're just chopping off the decimal of tx, and that gives us kx. So because it's a discrete random variable, it doesn't have a probability density function anymore. It just has a probability function. So the probability of kx equaling a certain value k is just k deferred 1qx. And we developed a couple of results as to what the cumulative distribution function and the survival function are going to look like in the case of this now discrete random variable kx. And another thing we can do, of course, is find the mean and variance of that random variable. The mean we call ex, and that's known as the curtate future lifetime. And again, that's just the average number of complete years that a life age x is going to live in the future. And we can obtain that uh, using some summation techniques. That ends up just equaling the sum of k going from 1 to infinity of kpx. We get uh, the variance as well. We got a result for that. That is uh, a nice result as well. And then finally, we looked at the relationship between the complete expectation of life and the curtate expectation of life. And a very, very good approximation is just that E circle X is EX plus a half. So on average, someone's going to die halfway through a year, on average. Reasonable assumption to make, especially at younger ages. And finally, the last thing we looked at this week was just a quick rundown of some of the common mortality models that are used. So I'm not going to list them all, there were seven of them, some of them were more useful than others, some of them we've already seen before in class, and some of them we will be seeing a little bit later as well. But that's just a good uh, thing to, take, to keep in mind. Many of those are used on the exams, so now you sort of get an idea of what types of mortality models are out there. So next week we'll start talking about life tables. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.